Welcome to my course on the science of exercise. My name is Robert Mazio, and I have been studying, researching, and teaching in the field of exercise science for over 40 years. I am also a fellow of the American College of Sports Medicine, the largest sports medicine and exercise science organization in the world. I am confident that you will find this course both enjoyable as well as informative. The knowledge gained from this course will have a practical application as it will address ways to improve your fitness, health, and wellness. This course will also be very useful to healthcare practitioners as I will discuss the benefits of exercise in reducing the risk of major diseases as well as contributing to healthy aging. After completing the four modules for this course, you will have a solid understanding of the science of exercise as it relates to one, the energetics of exercise, two, the role of physiological systems during exercise, three, factors contributing to fitness and performance, and four, the influence of exercise in health and disease. The first module will cover the important components related to the energetics of exercise. This will include a discussion of calorimetry, which is a technique used to measure an individual's energy expenditure and metabolic rate during exercise. The significant contribution of adenosine triphosphate, commonly referred to as ATP, will be addressed. ATP is the chemical energetic currency required for muscle to contract and do work. We will complete module one discussing the significant contributions of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins to the energetics necessary to sustain working muscles. Module two will address the adjustments that the body's many physiological systems need to make in order to respond to the stress imposed during a single bout of exercise. This will, of course, include the muscular system or skeletal muscles. It will also include the adjustments required by the cardiovascular system to ensure proper blood flow to the working muscles for delivery of adequate oxygen and nutrients for fuel. The adjustments made by the respiratory system required to maintain oxygen levels in the lungs, as well as for carbon dioxide removal from the body, will also be examined. The central importance of the endocrine system and its hormones in regulating the mobilization and utilization of our major fuels, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, as well as regulating other key physiological systems, will be discussed. Finally, we will finish module two discussing the effects that both a single bout of exercise as well as endurance training have on your immune system, thereby influencing your susceptibility to infections and illness. Module three will cover the many factors that contribute to fitness and performance. These include key training adaptations related to both endurance and strength training, basic nutritional considerations to optimize performance for both endurance and strength activities, the many factors that may contribute to muscle fatigue, whether lifting weights, sprinting, or distance racing, the mechanisms for the occurrence of muscle soreness and stiffness when performing a novel exercise activity or after a long layoff from training. Module three will end with a discussion of the mechanisms and effectiveness of the various performance-enhancing drugs used by athletes. The final module will examine the very significant role that exercise plays in the promotion of health and the reduction in risk factors for disease. This will include the role exercise has in weight control and obesity treatment, the many benefits of regular exercise in preventing and treating various diseases, including heart disease, diabetes, and certain cancers, the extent to which endurance and strength training contribute to healthy aging and improved independence and quality of life. And lastly, we will discuss how regular exercise can affect your brain by improving cognitive function and reducing the risk of dementia later in life. Armed with the information contained in this course, when put to practice, I am confident that it will contribute to your improved health and quality of life.